Hey, what's up guys, Ref here. Boy howdy, do we have a lot to talk about today. And I get to dust off this image for the first time in a while. We are once again dealing with a series of Twitter freaks. Twitter freaks who are once again reopening the Hogwarts legacy harassment campaign and some more Twitter freaks who are celebrating the deplatforming of an artist over a simple 30 second video that they made. So we're gonna start with an image of Hogwarts Legacy here. Now the goal of this video is to point this out now and circle back to it later in the video to show how some current events greatly relate to what happened during the Hogwarts Legacy harassment campaign that took place earlier this year. Now we're gonna start here. So this individual named Joe Cat has been trending pretty much nonstop for the better part of the last week on Twitter. Now who is Joe Cat? Well, they are an artist, a very well-known and very well-respected artist who has gotten a lot of attention over the years, and some of that attention has unfortunately been quite negative. Now, this is a very bizarre situation where I can say the harassment campaign that this person has suffered through for years can be boiled down to 30 seconds, and that 30 seconds is right here. It is a video that they animated a few years back titled, I like girls. It was a Lizzo song parody and it was like, you know, going through some images of anime girls and VTubers. And basically they were talking about how much they like girls in this video. It is a very harmless, albeit maybe cringy to some video. But this 30 second animation is pretty much the reason solely that they've been harassed for years on end. So we saw even earlier this year, for example, tweets going viral with 12 million views saying, I was gonna use this video for bait, but I just can't, man. This is the worst video in the world. Now, for some reason, once again, for like the 10th time, a few days ago, this video was getting hated on again and Joe Cat harassed as a result. A lot of people were coming out to claim that they were gay. And their proof of that was that Joe Cat really likes girls. Very strange stuff, but we saw a lot of images and soy jacks like this. Uh, there was people using like AI and other parodies to dunk on them. And of course, people like this would immediately hide once uh, we get to the conclusion of this story. But we saw people celebrating. They made fun of them a few days ago. And then yesterday they say, I come back three days later and he's gone. Great job, guys. So yes, they are referring to Joe Cat being deplatformed, essentially deplatformed, and they are celebrating this. So after everything, Joe Cat has pretty much said that they are walking away from public content creation. They made this statement with an accompanying document. It's gotten an infinite amount of attention, tens of millions of views. It says, if this is what it takes to be a content creator online, I don't think I'm cut out for it. Too long didn't read. I'm going to finish up my current ongoing projects and then I'm going to be taking an indefinite break from making content. And here's their statement. So basically they refer to the 30 second video that they uploaded back on YouTube a few years ago and how this would lead to some of the craziest harassment you'll ever see. It led to all sorts of things, many assumptions about my character, his history, his beliefs, his relationships, and all of those of my partner, as well as threats of violence to me, as well as my family, doxing attempts, and mocking from even people they looked up to and respected. All for a single 30 second video out of the 200 plus that they have created over the years. Now, the really, the, the big takeaway, the thing that seemed to be like the, the straw breaking the camel's back was the recent harassment campaign where also they have reported that their family members have had suspicious packages sent to their home. This thing got completely and utterly out of control and it's understandable that someone has this happen to them and they say enough is enough. I can't enjoy making content anymore when I'm dealing with this level of harassment that's also bleeding into real life threats as well. Now the reception to this whole situation was one of people sympathizing largely with Joe Cat, because this is a nightmare situation. We'll read a few of the positive quotes about this saying, this trend of creator you love who was just making fun stuff but couldn't handle being verbally abused every single day over it, quits making stuff and disappears, is going to continue repeating itself unless we choose to stop it. I hope y'all are happy with the endless Wojak memes, engagement farms, and AI stuff from now on because y'all just scared an entire generation of aspiring artists 
and content creators from posting their stuff. This effing sucks, man. The lengths people will go just to abuse others online is absolutely insane. You cannot like people, fine, but harassing them and their families till they just stop making things? What the F is wrong with you? It's sociopathy disguised as irony. And here's Scott Falco, another person who's been harassed over some of their animations. They say, this is such a shame. I've only ever heard nice things about Joe Cat from any other creator. They 100% don't deserve this harassment. I hope you can find a creative and fulfilling outlet that doesn't rely on the increasingly less fun content creation sites like YouTube or Twitter. Now here's a tweet that a lot of people are dredging up from earlier this year made by Joe Cat. It is something I want to take some time to talk about because I think this is very relevant for a conversation that maybe people didn't expect. Okay, so let me read it. It says, anyone shouting, what about the harassment is taking the topic of conversation and focus away from the main issue. Trans people are still in danger. Specifically, the harassment faced by content creators, content creators who played Hogwarts Legacy. It is not, nor should it be about us. Content creators are not in the same danger that trans people are. Now, I reviewed this tweet in a video earlier this year. I disagreed with some portions of it. I thought that the final part uh, was somewhat devaluing the harassment and doxing that creators were facing for playing Hogwarts Legacy by saying basically we should not focus on that and focus on trans people are facing greater dangers. My simple point is that we should focus on all of these things. All of this bad behavior should be looked at and called out and we shouldn't take precedent of one issue over another. We should just value all of them and look at them for what they're worth. But anyways, I need to make this very clear going forward in this video. What Joe Cat said here does not in any way justify the harassment and doxing they are currently facing. That does not justify it. Okay, I want to make that very, very clear. I bring this tweet up because of people's reaction to it resurfacing. A lot of people are looking at this and conversations about content creators being harassed during the Hogwarts Legacy Harassment Campaign, and they're acting like that event is completely different than what's currently happening to Joe Cat. when I will say that they are very much related, okay? I believe, and Twitter will disagree, that two things can exist simultaneously. People should not be harassed for a silly video, as well as people should not be harassed for playing a video game. Right now, people are basically taking a side and saying what happened to Joe Cat is wrong, but what happened to people playing Hogwarts Legacy back earlier this year was totally justified because of their belief about the game. When I'm saying that both of these situations had bad results and they should be treated like forms of related harassment where people were being harassed and doxxed over the media that they were consuming. And I think, I say this without taking it lightly, I believe that the year, 2023, was the most toxic year on the internet, especially when it came to content creators. We have seen more people get harassed in mass, threatened, doxxed, and what have you, over the content they produced than the last five years combined. It is happening on almost a daily basis where someone posts a video that people disagree with or makes artwork that people find cringe, and they end up getting threatened in real life over it. This is happening almost every single day, and we have people like Joe Cat saying, I can't take that level of harassment anymore. I can't enjoy making art when I'm not safe, and I'm gonna try to move on to things. What happened with Joe Cat is very similar to things that happened to content creators during the Hogwarts Legacy harassment campaign, and people acting like these things are so different are missing the point entirely. But of course, people took this opportunity to once again try to rewrite the narrative of what happened back in February of this year. We had a person here saying, bro, Pikami didn't even effing quit. She just streams under a new name. If you're gonna lie, at least be accurate about it. She may have been unfairly harassed, but Joe had nothing to do with it. Of course, Joe had nothing to do with it. People are missing the point that these events have a lot in common with each other. And this user quoted them saying, you effers harass someone coming back from a long hiatus into going silent for a month over a stupid video game. Yes, all of these things again can exist. 
people shouldn't be harassed over a video game just like Joe Cat shouldn't have been harassed over the video that they made. But since people are trying to rewrite the history of what happened earlier this year, we got to remind ourselves the level of what happened earlier this year, okay? I have a video here. This is one of the longest videos in the history of my channel. I will put a link to it in the description if you need it as a resource. I went through pretty much everything that happened over the months of February and, uh, and uh, March earlier this year and all the harassment that ensued from the release of Hogwarts Legacy. And the main features of that involve people like Silvervale, who was harassed and her family doxxed for streaming that game. We had Pikami, who returned from a hiatus and then was bullied into silence for simply considering streaming that game. We had people also like Pippa who were harassed and labeled all kinds of crazy things with zero evidence for simply streaming the game as well. And it goes beyond this, okay? I've seen images like this all the time. I can tell a lot of these are from my videos because of the sensor bars and things. This is just a small sample size of tweets where people are being harassed and threatened over playing or even being indifferent to Hogwarts Legacy. And I, I bring tweets like this up to compare them to the things that are happening to people like Joe Cat. This harassment campaign started in February of this year and people were justifying the doxing of people like Silvervale's family because they played this piece of media. Don't you see how all of this relates to what's happening to Joe Cat in this incredibly toxic environment that social media has become? But the whole air of people talking about Hogwarts Legacy never ends because it wasn't just what happened with Joe Cat that rehashed some of these discussions. Only a few days ago, people were upset about the fact that Hogwarts Legacy is going to likely be the highest selling game of 2023, which based on the way the supposed boycott backfired, that's hardly surprising. But you have tweets like this still getting a lot of support saying, insane how the top selling game of the year has made basically no cultural impact at all. Uh, the way it lives rent free in the minds of millions of Twitter users is a pretty big cultural impact. And the fact that a game that likely would have just been a fart in the wind back in February has become the most high selling game of 2023 and is still talked about on a daily basis, that tells me cultural impact, but maybe not the one they expected when they were making this title. And of course, they are approaching nearly 20 million copies of this game sold, over a billion in sales. It's really mind boggling to think about when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy. Not even the developers of that game expected anything like this. And of course, other people have pointed out, and yet somehow has no presence at the Game Awards really makes you think. Well, no, it really makes you think because Game Awards are made for people on Twitter, okay? They don't really represent what actual gamers care about. If you see the results of award shows like that, and also like in the VTubing scene like that, it, it's a very biased presentation, okay? But this has been a lot of controversial topics we've gone over today, a lot of sensitive ones as well, and I definitely appreciate any thoughts you guys have about them in the comments section down below. I know uh, this situation with Joe Cat is very disappointing for a lot of people, just like the Hogwarts Legacy harassment campaign was very disappointing to people. And I just, at the end of the day, don't think people should be harassed over content that they consume or make if it's not hurting anyone. And in these cases, people were simply playing a video game or simply making a silly 30 second video. And it's unfortunate what happened to all those people involved in both of those situations. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.